Hello, I have a banner to say I'm live. Oh, crikey, here we go. Hello, everyone, already from Suffolk, West Cornwall, Matt Adams. I'm not sure where you're from, but bless you all for joining. Um, and we'll just wait for a little while just to make sure lots of other people join in before I start chattering on. Oh, hello from Scotland, <laughs> Fiona. Crikey. I'm a bit nervous this evening. I have no idea why. Oh, Glastonbury. Hello. And Wyoming in the USA. Birmingham, Delaware. Oh, this is a bit, this is amazing. Michigan. Oh, I, now I can't even pronounce that. Arden, oh, I can't, <laughs> crikey, there's so many already. Seattle, Newcastle, Heritage, Lincolnshire, Northampton, Dallas, Billy, hi. <laughs> from Belgium oh my goodness so many Wales Ontario wow hi there everybody wow Sligo hello from damn Sligo oh bless you something Penda Island British Columbia Brisbane wow Western Australia Missouri just so many places from Hawaii oh my lord Portugal New York worldwide peeps what an amazing thing this is this is just awesome this is the thing i love more than anything when whenever i'm i'm kind of asked to do this this is just incredible what a fantastic community all over the world and i'm babbling already and i tell you what i'm going to take my glasses off so i'm not going to be able to see these things but i can see, all i can see when i look at myself is reflections in my glasses so i'm going to take take it off so you've all become a blur now but welcome to everybody and thank you for um joining me this evening uh, on tea with a druid 240 i believe um, so while everybody's still still I can see I can see it clicking over, but it's all a, just a bit of a grey blur to my unsighted eyes now. But I thought um, today I would kind of babble on a bit about the wheel of the year because it's kind of been on my mind a bit lately. Um, kind of having a review, I guess it's that time of year, you know, New Year's always make you kind of review things don't they you kind of look at everything and go okay what is what is it I'm looking at particularly for for me I always look at what is it about my druidry and um, what is it what are the important things what are the things that I look at that that I feel give me a good structure a good anchor point and a good way of working with the natural world throughout the year and and really the modern wheel of the year because it is a, a modern invention i mean Nguyen um and uh, the founder of obod and gerald gardner kind of got together at spielplatz the the um naturist place and sat down and and pulled together kind of the the cross quarter days and the uh, of of um, you know, Imolk. Um, I'm going to put my glasses. On, but the quarter days and the and the celestial things, so the solstices and the equinoxes, because these things never used to all be um, celebrated in a in one system. It was always kind of a bit hickledy pickledy, and they they created together this fabulous kind of structure which gives us a wonderful rolling feel throughout the year, a way of hanging a spirituality, regardless of what that spirituality, whether you're a druid, whether you're a Wiccan, whether you're a witch, whether you're a heathen, whatever they, these things are, everybody has a kind of a, a common structure that can be worked wherever you live in, in this fabulous globe of ours. And I've kind of been thinking about it again and going back to basics with it and kind of try, because I write um, s celebrational um, rituals f for our open uh, Gorseth rituals where any anybody is welcome to come. 
um, at the Long Man of Wilmington um, in Sussex. I'm constantly trying to find new ways to kind of think about why we're celebrating at that particular time of year. So we've got Imolk coming up uh, it, or Candlemas or various other different names uh, for this particular time. And for some, it's the first um, buddings of spring. It's dedicated to the goddess Bridget. Um, it's and a sense of eternal flame of, of that rekindling. Um, it's a very sacred healing time for divination and all kinds of things. And that's a broad sense, and and, uh, and that's kind of founded in a in an Irish uh, mythology, which has some connotations with with lots of Britain and and lots of Northern Europe. But how do we? How does somebody in I don't know, say Brazil, celebrate. So do, do you have that kind of wheel of the year sense of a turning season? For us, it's cold right now. The sun is very low. We don't have much light, although it's growing now, thankfully, after the winter solstice. So how does the wheel of the year kind of relate to modern pagans across the world? I am sure that every every country in every part of this fabulous globe has their own folklore their own ritual and their own way of celebrating that and i'm fascinated by how we can be a community of druids and a fabulous thing that i've completely stolen which is a druid adjacent which people which are like-minded people that in any other way could be called um, a druid, but they have their own particular way of working. Um, how do you work with your own seasons? How do you work? What is your folklore for the first glimmerings of spring? What is your um, what are your stories? What are your things? Because I think these things bring communities that seem sort of fairly disparate i think that brings a sense of community regardless of what your spiritual path is this is anybody who's listened to me rabbit on before knows that i'm all about this sense of of a global community and about bringing people together with that sense of of similarity rather than kind of emphasizing the differences and i think the wheel of the year as it's been taken on in various parts of, uh, of this globe uh, and in varying um, spiritualities has become a really universal language that allows us as human beings to begin to reconnect with our landscape. It, it's whatever landscape that is, whether you're in northern the northern hemisphere whether you're in the southern hemisphere or whether you're anywhere around the equator that sense of the turning cycles the cycles of, of of the sun and the stars and the moon and the cycles of the land beneath our feet with which we correspond those those celestial cycles that that blending of agricultural and celestial has become a really powerful tool, not just for reconnecting us back to nature, but for giving us a psychological moment every six weeks or weeks or so, where we can stop and take a breath. We can stop and take a breath with the, the earth beneath our feet and look down and go, well, what's it doing right this minute? Right this minute in Sussex by the sea, it's cold. It's been very crisp for the past few days. It's been very clear. And when you go outside, your cheeks are kind of, you know, pinched and 
and everything and the birds are all kind of going oh i'm not entirely sure about this could you put some food on the bird feeder please because it's a bit lacking so for me this time of year is about keeping warm it's about keeping close it's about planning it's about doing all that kind of idea but in the southern hemisphere it's it's completely the opposite they're going into you know the autumn time and um I don't know, but yes, autumn time, isn't it? God, I'm so turned around. It's had such a bizarre week this week. So <laughs> forgive me if I ramble too much. Um, but at this moment, wherever you are on this fabulous place we call home, what is it doing for you? What is this time? And what are the stories associated with this time? How do we connect with our our ancestors at this particular point and how do we connect with ourselves so if i'm cold and i'm wrapping up and i'm trying to concentrate on the growing light in my space my thoughts turn to planning my thoughts turn to new seeds being planted and to um how i'm going to invest in what I'm I'm doing creative projects or or you know kind of physical projects with the house or the garden or whatever but what is what is that what is that first glimmerings how do you find that we we had a a lady from Brazil called Karina lovely lovely lady many years ago who came to Britain to stay for a while and she said the reason she'd come to Britain for a while was to experience seasons because in her home it was the the changes were there but they were so subtle that you had to look very hard wherever you were in the landscape whatever season it was you had to look very hard to find the changes because they were very very small and because because the weather was kind of pretty standard so how, how she explained it to me and it and that's always struck me so when i talk when i'm talking to a kind of global community which i need to put my glasses on to see you all there <laughs> um i kind of wonder what it's like for you and 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 at this time of year what what you're doing i'm going to put my glasses back on because i'm i'm kind of rambling and there were loads and loads of things that I noted down on a piece of paper that I'm kind of forgetting, I think. So finding how the wheel of the year is relevant to a modern pagan, not necessarily pagan, but a modern spirituality, a modern path where we're walking and trying to be in tune with nature after being subtly and not so subtly cut off from it not necessarily by choice but by this overriding sense of global kind of commodity what's the word commercializing of the world and seeing the world as nothing more than sources of material and resources to be used which which made a disconnect for so many of us, it, it's become a really powerful way to bring that back and to, to really look at the balance of life within ourselves and, that, and a reconnect with the balance of life around us. Because I think the, the lack of that, um, harmed us all actually i think it in some fairly fundamental ways i think it's affected our mental health and our spiritual health and using the wheel of the year as a focus to kind of tap in with ourselves and align that with the rhythm of what's going on in the moment you get that every six weeks that as I say, that that time to just stop and breathe and say, how do I celebrate this moment? 
how do I celebrate where I'm at in myself and celebrate where my landscape is right this minute? And how can that, how can I give and receive that powerful energy that's always been there and yet I didn't have a language to communicate either with myself or with anyone else or even with the landscape itself. So my thoughts on the Wheel of the Year are magically, spiritually, emotionally, it's a really useful tool. So this year I'm going to be concentrating even more on finding kind of like local folklore to put into my ceremonies when I write them, even more just taking the time to look at the subtle changes day in and day out and tie that in with the moon cycles and how the sun is at that particular moment and how I feel about life in that moment because it it's such an exchange it's a powerful exchange to look globally which is sometimes a bit scary but also look at the minutiae of things that are going on in the moment i think when we can do that for ourselves when we can kind of look at how we connect with the landscape i think it can heal a lot of things it can heal a lot of things in our heads it can also help us listen listen to the to the land it can help us feel our ancestors and their inspiration through the legacy of folklore and, and stories and myth. And they can help us actually listen to each other, I think, a lot more. I have this image whenever I look up at the moon, whatever phase it's in, whatever is happening around it. And I imagine people all over the world, all looking up at the same moon many of them possibly having the same kind of thoughts I'm having at that particular moment. And if I'm feeling particularly down, if life has been difficult or overwhelming, just that, that few moments of breath, of, of looking at that powerful moon whatever phase it's in knowing that that phase is going to continue on and move around to the next phase and understanding that that is how my life is and how my life will work and by the time the the next phase of the moon comes around I will be in the next phase next seasonal phase and I will be moving through whatever process I'm in at the moment, it's incredibly comforting. And to know the fact that other people are looking up and doing the same kind of thing is, again, incredibly comforting. Um, I don't ever feel alone anymore with, with that kind of feeling. And kind of hanging all of that on the wheel of the year has has been a saving grace for so many times in my life. I've found that sense of being in a community, even when I've been completely on my own. And for somebody who's a bit of a, <laughs> spent a lot of time on my own, um, that's quite, that's been quite powerful for me. I, I mean, it may not be the same for everybody else when they look at the moon. Why I find it very difficult when people want to go and live on the moon. The idea of people being up there and living on the moon just kind of makes me feel, you know, don't feel comfortable with that at all. It's like, get off my moon. <laughs> it's my spiritual place, get off. <laughs> but, you know. But um, 
I think I'm I'm kind of rambling a bit. Um, so I'm putting my glasses on so you won't be able to see my eyes again. So let's have a look. I've been chattering on about the wheel of the year and emotional states and how comforting it makes me feel. I was just looked, I've just, because I put my glasses on, I can see some of the, the, the comments and other people are saying the same thing about the moon. I, that's fabulous. I, I, yeah, I agree. No people on the moon. Yeah, no people on the moon. Damn it. <laughs> but, um, I think I've chatted. Oh, I'm just looking at the time. Um, I think that's enough chatter. What I'd actually like to do now is is maybe let's just connect with the kind of notion of the wheel of the year. <laughs> I've just seen another one. Get off my moon. <laughs> Um, I, th I think I would quite like to do a meditation because I'm feeling that actually I need to just feel that sense of communication and connection regardless of whatever your season is let's just take a few minutes if you are willing let's Take a breath and maybe close our eyes together and take a long, slow breath with the earth beneath our feet. Take a long, slow breath and breathe in the season. Wherever you are, whatever is happening in your part of the world, feel the season, whether it's warm or cold, whether it's humid or dusty, snowy. Breathe in that sense of the moment, how the land is. And take a long, slow breath to feel the ancestors through their stories through their legacy that is held within you. Like the roots of a great, great tree. Feel yourself connected to this nurturing land, held by it in all its seasons in all its majesty, in all its frightening and beautiful moods. Feel your feet firmly placed in this season, in this moment a sense of community, a sense of awe, a sense of majesty at the turning, moving cycles going on all around us, sustaining every plant, every animal, every realm of existence, this great, powerful globe that is our home. And now take a long, slow breath with the blood pulsing through your veins. Feel that blood that life 
surging through you and feel it connected to every stream, every river, all the waters of the earth running through like veins, feeding, nurturing, cleaning and nurturing more life. Our blood pulsing with the rhythms of the earth, ebbing and flowing like the oceans, rising and falling with the tides, with the moon, with the seasons, flowing through the land as it changes, as it grows, as it flourishes and flowers and fruits and then turns to autumn and winter. At times it is ice. At times it is parched. But always it flows once more. And then take a long, slow breath with the air filling your lungs, the breath of life running through us. The breath of life, the breath of song, the breath of story. the inspirations that fly through the air, coming on the wings of birds, of butterflies and of all flying things. Feel your voice riding on that breath, singing the song of now, singing the song of the past and singing into the future. A chorus, a symphony in harmony with all life that lives and breathes on this beautiful place we call home. Take a long, Slow breath again, the stars in the heavens above us, with the spirits unknown that surround us. Feel how they ebb and flow, how creativity rises and falls, how the cycles of life turn and shift, carrying us up and down through emotions. So many emotions, so much love, so much laughter, sadness at times, but always with every breath. We are inspired as the wheel turns, as we keep ourselves aligned with the power, the beauty and the nurturing energy of the seasons, of the earth and with all life upon it. Ever free. We are a worldwide community that come together with our similarities, our loves of this nature, this nurture, this inspiration that is 
the turning wheel of the year. And one more long, slow breath with this global community. Powerful, inspiring and strong in our care for each other and for this place we call home. And as we breathe together, let's open our eyes once more and feel that sense of community, that sense of druidry that hangs on this modern yet beautiful tool that we call the Wheel of the Year. And however it works for you, however your seasons manifest, however your lives align with your stories from your ancestors and for new stories that you create in the future, know that there are always people who will look up at the phases of the moon and feel you and feel me and feel each other and know we are never alone. This is a circle that is open, but it is never broken. The ever turning wheel of the year is a powerful thing. And with that, I will wish you good night and thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you again in the future. Look up at the moon. And I'll be looking at you through that mirror. Be well, be powerful, change the world and keep them off the wretched moon. Bless them. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And thank you for joining me. I hope you will have a beautiful turning season. Take care. <laughs>